Hello again, everybody. I have a video today on regular expressions. Not sure if it's something that everyone out there is familiar with. And I know myself, before I discovered regular expressions, I would do a lot of extra work in trying to clean up text files and, and different things. So I wanted to just basically introduce the concept. I'm not gonna go into great depth or have this be structured like a tutorial. What I wanted to show is a, a use case for myself and hopefully through showing that, one, it will give you enough of an insight into what regular expressions are that if you're interested, you can pursue learning how to use them in a way that's applicable to your situation, or let's say you're a developer or learning development. If you are a developer, this video is probably not gonna teach you very much. Actually, I would guess it's not gonna teach you anything. But for those of us who are just trying to undertake fairly simple tasks. It's, it's a pretty impressive tool for being able to do things in a much faster and repeatable way. A regular expression is a sequence of characters that define a search pattern. And that's a fairly meaningless statement on its own. It doesn't really give you any insight. Basically what it is, is a way to identify characters within strings of text and then be able to do something with the characters that you match. Let me jump into an example and I can show you what I mean. One of the things that I do is I'm creating show notes for DLN Extend. And what I'll do is I'll go out to each show and get their notes from the show and then create a list of those topics so that Nate and I can discuss them. And I'm going to use This Week in Linux as an example. Michael does a really good job of putting together his show notes. He includes a segment index, which is great because then you know where to jump to if you want to listen to a specific topic. In my case, I really just want the topic name itself. I also don't want the links, but I also don't want to type this out again. So what I'm going to do is just copy this, bring it into gedit, and I'll clean up a couple things to start. Just take out the items that I really don't need. And that leaves me with this block of text that I want to clean again, this first part and the last part. Now I could, and what I used to do before I started using regular expressions was to just grab whatever text I didn't want one at a time and delete them. There are also things like multiple cursors. I don't know if I can do that in here. I'm sure there's a way. A lot of editors will give you multiple cursors. So maybe you would just insert multiple cursors here and delete at least this block. But where multiple cursors might be an issue is if it doesn't line up perfectly. In this case, it would. But you're also having to insert those cursors. So it's extra steps. All of that work, whether it's manually grabbing one at a time or using a feature like multiple cursors, all of it is just a lot of editing. Where regular expressions come into play is I know what I want to get rid of and I know what I want to keep. So I'm going to target those things specifically. So to start with, I'm going to show this as two separate tasks, getting rid of the timestamp and the equal sign in the space, and then getting rid of the links afterward. And then after that, I will show how to do this all in one step to save even more time. The first part in understanding regular expressions is the concept of special characters, shorthands, character classes, and you don't have to know what all of these are to start using them. You certainly don't have to know the terminology, you just have to kind of understand how they work. So let's look at the first one that you'll always use, which is the dot or the period. And that matches any character, whether it's an actual character, a, a digit, a word character, a space, whatever it is, it's gonna match everything. So if I were to just hit find right now, it'll match the, the, the dots, but that's because I forgot to select regular expression. Now, when I do that, it will show all of them. Now you might think, okay, great. I've got all of my characters. I can then just say, match all the characters you find up until let's say the, the equal sign. So if I do that and hit find, I only get the space and then the equal sign. Because in reality, what the dot is doing is selecting a single character. So what you need to do is tell it, I want all the characters up to the equal sign. And the search character that you would use for that is an asterisk. So now if I do dot asterisk, which means any character repeated until you hit this. 
If I do that, great. Now I've got all of that. But now I have a space that I want to get rid of as well. So I could do either a space key and find it that way. Although I'll tell you that not all editors that I've seen support just putting white space as part of the search string. So another way I might do that is with one of these character classes or shorthands is backslash s. Again, I just happen to know this, but if you don't, I'll include a link for this. And you see here a shorthand for any white space character. So in this case, my white space is literally a space. So if I clear this search and then come back and find, you see that it did grab the space and now I'm, so I've now selected everything up to the point that I want. The problem with this is that what if somehow, and this could happen, what if somehow there's two spaces there, you know, on a couple of these lines? Somehow, maybe it just didn't format properly. Now, if I do that, you notice that it didn't grab the space characters leading up to the title. So really what I probably should do just to be safe, is to use that asterisk key again and say every space character. So now when I do find, you see that it grabbed those additional spaces. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of those spaces because they don't need to be there. And you'll see that it still works the way it should. So again, what the asterisk is saying is repeat looking for the previous character or the previous shorthand or the previous character class, whatever is there. And in this case, it was spaces or white space. All right, great. So now I've got that and it should capture even if there are extra spaces and what I want to replace it with. So in markdown for a list, I want to have either an asterisk or a dash. In this case, I'm just going to use a dash. So let's come back here and we want a dash. And then we also want to have a space between the dash and this. So I'll go ahead and hit replace and there you go. So now I've got the first part done and I want to come back and clean up the links. I can keep the space because there's a space here, but again, maybe there's more than one space somehow. Let's just put one there just in case. So we want to do, so we want to do slash space asterisk to grab everything after a space. So if I don't further qualify this, it's only going to grab one or more space character or white space. And what I really want, is that and this dot that's here is actually a special character so i'm going to highlight that and copy it put that in there let's see what that does and sure enough now i have any space leading up to that character and really what i want from this point on is i just want to trim off the rest of the line so as you might expect i'm going to use a dot and an asterisk and you see now it found everything from that space dot and onward. And I don't want to replace it with a dash. So I'll clear that and replace all. And there you go. Now I've got a nice clean list and I can take that and copy it into the document and be done. But I really don't like that I had to do two separate steps to get that result. So what I can do is I will copy this part I will go back to this one and make sure again, it's the right find and it is. And I will put that second one in here and what's going to happen is it doesn't match. This is an explicit search string, if you will, or, or expression, and it will only match if this actually is a logical expression. And in this case, it isn't simply because of the way that we've sort of mashed these two things together. We have this in the middle to account for that it can't match at this point because I haven't accounted for it within the expression. So how do I do that? Not only how do I do that, but how do I capture this and then make it part of the replacement, right? Because I don't want to overwrite this. In the previous cases, I had just either put in a dash and a space on each line, which was just repeated, whatever line, it didn't matter. That was just what was going to go in there. But in this case, what I want is each line has to keep this specific title. So what I need to do is in the appropriate place here. So if you remember, this was the first part of this, of the search. And this is the second part in here. What I want to do is include in parentheses, 
and parentheses is how you would grab a piece of the string to be able to reuse in the output or, or in the replacement. So what I want in here is just a dot star. I already qualified exactly what I want to start with and what I want to end with. And I'm really just taking into account that piece. So now if I hit find, it's gonna match the entire string, which makes sense because I've accounted for the entire string in the expression. And what I want to replace this with, I still want that dash space, but now I need to say, include what I had in the parentheses. So I'm going to reference that with in gedit backslash one. Now, if I replace all, it trimmed this and put in a dash, and then it captured this part of the string so that I could reuse it. After that part, which I'm accounting for here, then it says it's saying match this, and then there's no corresponding replacement, so it's going to be nothing. I could just as easily include a replacement for that as well. So let's just say I put a space and then hello, and then replace this. It, it will just include whatever you have as the replacement for this part of the expression. So obviously that's not what I want. So I'm going to take the hello out of there and replace all. And there you go. So now I have a nice clean list and I was able to do that all in one step. Uh, I can just grab this and copy it in here. And there you go, there's my nice list. Now the best part about this is, even though it took me a little bit of time to come up with my search expression, what I can now do is in future episodes for this specifically, I can come in here and copy paste this in and reuse this expression to give me what I was looking for. There's one last thing I wanted to show, and that is that you can't assume that every text editor or program that uses regular expressions uses the same syntax. So for example, if I were to bring that same list into VS Code, if I were to just take this search string it may work, it's not a guarantee. So let's go ahead and do a replacement here. So I'm gonna find, again, I have to make sure regular expressions are selected. I'm gonna find using that, which it looks like it's matching all of that, which is great. But let me take my replacement here and put that in. So it's, it's not gonna show me that the replacement works or doesn't work. But if I go ahead and say replace all, you see I get a backslash one. And the reason for that is VS Code doesn't use the same syntax as gedit. And the one thing that's different is that instead of using a backslash, you would need to use a dollar sign. And you see you get the same result, but referencing this in the replacement, the backslash wasn't understood by VS Code. So you will run into this if you use regular expressions enough. Different languages and different programs use different styles or syntaxes for regular expressions. So the concepts will be the same or very similar, but the actual syntax for the string itself or the replacement string or some piece of it may not be the same. So what you'll see is if, let's say, you went and searched for VS Code regular expression syntax or type or something like that. You might find something like it says it's using Perl expressions or it's using some other programming language. And then you might have to go actually investigate, okay, how does this work in there? And it's really not a big deal. In this case, it was a single character that I had to change. And I already knew that from experience, but if you didn't, it might be frustrating or confusing because why did it work here and it didn't work in VS Code? So just know that that exists as a thing so even though we have to do a little bit of work up front to come up with the exact regular expression we need, I hope you can see that once you've taken the time to do that, it's a repeatable process. It's something that you can reuse to save you time. So you're front loading your effort coming up with the right expression, but on the back end, you're gonna save a ton of time and also get repeatable results, which is nice as well. Because if I was doing this with just a keyboard, 
by hand, I may have accidentally chopped something off. And not that it's the end of the world, especially for my use case, but to me, it's just cleaner this way and it makes more sense. And I certainly didn't learn what I know about regular expressions in a day. I've been using them for a while and it's just something that as you have more experience with, you find more ways to use them. You may have been doing the same task for years and years and never even thought, is there a better way to do this? And this is an opportunity perhaps for you to try regular expressions. So there you go. Hopefully you found this helpful. I'd love to get your feedback. Why don't you tell me, do you use regular expressions? Have you heard of them before? Is this something that's interesting to you? Whatever feedback you have, I'd love to hear it. Please leave a comment below. If you liked the video, please like. If you really liked it, consider subscribing so you see my future videos. And with that, have a great day, and I will see you again soon. Take care.